We're gonna hope that this giant cup of coffee gives me the energy that I need to film this video. My name is Chloe, welcome back to my channel, thank you for being here today. Today's video is going to be a TBR video, it is the September round of TBR MASH. I am well aware that the last video I put on this channel was my July TBR, that I'm pretty sure I referenced the fact that I've not really put any videos up since like my May TBR. Basically life, as I've explained multiple times now on this channel, just has been like different over the last few months in a good way, like I moved but it just kind of upended a lot of things and I have actually been reading over the last couple of months so it was a while where I didn't read at all I've started reading again but I just did not want to sit in front of the camera and talk to people like I've been out doing other things and I am going to do a video sort of catching you up on the reading that I have done over the last couple of months and also the many many theatre trips I've been taking like I live in London now the theatre is right there and um, so I've been just out and about doing things. But I thought, you know what, I do miss filming these videos. I am gonna be incredibly awkward while I get used to filming them again. Um, but I have got a list of videos that I want to put out. I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, gonna be back on it in September. And what better way to start that than with a round of TBR Mash. TBR Mash, for any of you who don't know, any of you who are new here, is my TBR game, which is inspired by the childhood game of Mash. Now, I am going to struggle with explaining this this month because I have made a few changes to it to try and like make sure that I do actually keep up with filming these videos and I do actually keep up with my reading. So you know what, I'm going to put this down because I talk with my hands and it'll be a lot easier to talk when I'm not holding the giant cup of coffee. So I'm going to put this down and I will explain to you how it works. I should also say as well actually I'm hoping this room is a little bit less echoey than it has been when I filmed in here before I'm in my dining room and we have finally sort of got around to decorating it there are bookshelves everywhere and I'm hoping that it makes it less echoey but I'm very sorry again if it is still a little bit echoey but it's the only place that I have sort of a blank wall to film and even then like it's less of a blank wall than it was previously because I'm now in a different place because there are bookshelves where I was filming before but anyway TBR MASH, inspired by the childhood game of MASH. Usually you would use it to predict how your life is going to go. I use it to dictate how my reading life is going to go. So basically I use a random number generator, which I've just realised I haven't got my laptop, so I can't even use a random number generator. I'm going to have to run and grab that. But I use a random number generator to work my way around the board, eliminating a prompt each time until there is only one left in each section. And that is the prompt that I use to pick my TBR. We also then have MASH in the middle, which in the game stands for Mansion, Apartment, Shack, House. In my game, it is Mansion is a big book, Apartment is a small book, Shack is a book you've been putting off and House is comfortable, so it's a mood read. Now, this is where things start to change. Usually I have some things in there, which are basically kind of like punishments for if the game doesn't go how I want it to go and basically where I would have to pick extra books. And this is one of the issues that I've been having is that whilst I have been reading, what I've actually enjoyed over the last couple of months is sort of being able to mood read a little bit more and just pick what I'm in the mood for rather than feeling like I have to read something for content or to fit my TBR. So I don't want to have quite as many books on my TBR as sometimes I have had because some months I don't get any extras and some months I get multiple. I've made it so that I can only ever have one extra every month and the reason that is is that I have taken out all of my plus one cards which I normally have and the only time I'll get an extra is if the same colour comes up twice because each prompt has a colour. I have also possibly got a way around getting an extra though because these extras on here are ones that are left over from when my friends picked books to put on my TBR back in March and because I'm a little bit behind on those because I've not been reading although actually I think I may have read some of them just because I chose to read them but anyway because I've been a bit behind on those I thought rather than sort of take them out completely. What I'm going to do is that if I actually want to put one of them on my TBR before I get to the extras, I'm gonna do that. And then if it happens to come up as the extra that month, I don't have to take an extra because I've already put it on the TBR, if that makes sense. I know these are many ways to me sort of get out of things, but it's my game, I can do whatever I want. And yeah, I just wanna make it so that I can actually read what I want to read rather than what I have to read. I'm, I know you guys are fine with that, but I just feel the need to explain it. Anyway, I do actually need to go and grab my laptop so I can use the random number generator. I don't think there's really anything else to explain because I've explained how the extras work, I've explained how the prompts work. Basically, that is pretty much it. I'm gonna work my way around the board 
and we're going to see what prompts we get. So let me just go and grab my laptop so we can figure out what number we need to work our way around and then we will get to picking what I'm going to read in September. I know I normally say here, I normally say there are any mandatory reads. There is one I'm doing because not long it is my read along with, which I'm hosting with Lisa from Lisa Does Life. We are currently reading the Lifelike series by Jay Kristoff. I will try potentially to get the second book on here. Technically it should be the third book, but we've been doing the live show sort of like the end of the first week of the month. Um, the next live show I believe is supposed to be on the 7th. I do need to double check that with Lisa, but basically I'm hoping to read the second book in the series in the first week of September, and then I'll be reading the third book in the first week of October. So I need to try and get, I can't even miss Deviate, Deviate is the second one. This is not my favourite series that I've read for that read along. So I'm a little bit more like, hmm, I need to read that. But do I want to? I'm going to. It's fine. But anyway, let me go and grab my laptop and then we can see if I can fit it onto this TBR or if that one will be an extra. But it's fine. It's fine. As always, I set my parameters between the numbers 5 and 15. And this month, we have got a number 15. It's always a long one that takes me ages to get the first prompt. But... Never mind. Well, it's either ages to get the first one or it's ages to get one of them, but at some point it takes a while to work my way around. But anyway, you guys don't need to see me count. Let's speed this up. Okay, so maybe it's a later one so it'll take ages because that was actually really, really quick. And the first prompt that we have is, I've still these up with washi tape rather than blue tack, so it's making it harder, but it is hold more than one year ago which basically I have sort of got a like idea of things that I want to read at the minute and it's just trying to fit them in and there was one that I just kind of remembered like oh I do want to read that and you know what I'm gonna put it on here it's, it's gonna go on this TBR I will try and read it in the month of September let me just go and grab it I'm just gonna say actually before I hold up this book um I am filming like I said in the dining room and there are multiple bookshelves in here but they're not all my bookshelves some of them belong to Meg my housemate and I am grabbing some of her copies because I've left mine upstairs <laughs> and she owns them so this is not my copy because I do not have the hardback of this but I do have the paperback and I have owned it for a while and that is Middle Game by Shauna Maguire now I am not going to tell you a synopsis of this because I don't know a synopsis of this I don't want to know a synopsis of this I know it's about twins called Roger and Dodger and that is about all I know and I've heard, I, I was going to say nothing but good things, but I've heard good things from my friend group. I've heard like mixed things from other places because I know that it's like not for everyone. But I have been very much wanting to read this. I'm also feeling very autumnal. I know it's still summer. I know it's still like warm at some points. It's actually quite warm while I'm filming this, but I want it to be autumn. And this book is just giving off autumn vibes, probably because the sequel is very much like, it's like a leaf that's changing colour. But yeah I know nothing about this I have liked what I've read from Sean Maguire before I've read a fair amount of the Every Hard Always series I think I've read up to like book five now and yeah have no clue but I have owned it for longer than a year and Becca read it last month and she really liked it it's just sort of put it back on my radar again and I'm, I'm intrigued this was not like in my pile of books that I was already planning to put on my TBR but it, it stared at me as I was setting up the ring light so middle game that is what we're starting with okay okay let's see what our second prompt is shall we okay that bit took a little bit longer so let's see what prompt number two is this is going to be a contemporary i don't know if you can see that the light is shining on it but it does say contemporary which oh, this is like I feel like every TBR that I do has a selection of books that are definitely inspired by Meg but you like I live with her like I hear her thoughts on books quite a lot and I have been reading a book every month by a particular author for the last like well this will be the third month now and I'm actually very close to finishing one of them at the minute and I'm immediately wanting to pick up her next book and it is a contemporary so why not just get it on this TBR at this point let me just go and grab it again I'm going to be grabbing Meg's copy because I don't actually own it so I will be stealing hers because all of the other ones I have from this author are in paperback and then for their new book they've decided to release it in hardback and I'm like I'm not buying the hardback version I don't need it 
so I'm gonna steal my card back. And that book is Happy Place by Emily Henry. This one, I do know the synopsis of, it's about two people who they, are they, are they already split up? Yeah, they split up six months ago. And basically they go on a holiday every year with their friends, I think it is. And they haven't told anyone that they split up. So they go, it's supposed to be the last time that they're going on this holiday because the place that they go is for sale. So they go as like one last holiday altogether. And then I believe inevitably they come back to each other somehow throughout it. And I'm very excited for it. As I said, I am towards the end of book lovers at the minute and should hopefully be finishing that today or tomorrow, fingers crossed, because it is the end of the month. And I very much want to read this one. I've heard very good things about this one. I've also, I've, I've also heard people like getting upset reading this one, but like, I think it's happy in the end. You would hope so. Like it's given a very cheery cover, um, but now I'm excited for this. I'm also very excited for Emily Henry's next book. The synopsis sounds fantastic. I am annoyed that they're all gonna be coming out in hardback now, because I feel like I'm gonna give in next time and just buy the hardback. But for now I can read Meg's copy of Happy Place. And this, will be being read in September as well. But at least I gave a vague synopsis of that one. Middle game, I'm just like, no, I'm not, I don't need to know. This one, like, I've got an idea and I didn't even really have to read. I was just checking that I knew what I was talking about. I feel quite proud of myself as someone who very rarely knows the synopsis of books and is usually very, very bad at explaining them. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let's move on to prompt number three. Okay, time to pick a third prompt. Okay, we have got... A third prompt, I should say, those are different colours. They look quite like the same colour, but this one is orange. And yes, that one is definitely red. So, so far, I don't have to pick an extra. And I don't have to pick an extra this time, but I am also a little bit struggling now because this is romance. And like, maybe I should have put the Emily Henry one for romance. But you know what? I actually went book shopping today and one of, well, I was gonna say one of the books that I bought. I went to the works and got three books for six pounds. They are all romance, of course they are. So I just have to pick which one I want to read and I know which one it is because it's glaring at me. I'm just gonna go and grab it. And you can tell that I just bought it because I am a person who takes the stickers off of her books and there is still very much the three for six pounds sticker on here. But this is Once More Feeling by Alyssa Sussman. And Basically, this sounds like it's going to be awful, but also it's like a romance that's set around a Broadway show. Like, I had to buy it, obviously. So it is two people called Katie and Cal. Well, basically, they both used to be pop stars. Katie was in a relationship with the lead singer of the band that Cal was in. He was in a boy band. And some sort of scandal happens to do with those two that ends up sort of ruining Katie's career. And then it, it's like years later and basically Cal is directing a Broadway show and she has the chance to star in it. And I don't really know much else about that, but you know, it sounds awful. It does, but I'm still kind of excited for it. I did see it on TikTok first and I was like, it's a romance set around theater. I feel like I need to read it. <laughs> even if it is awful. But yeah, this is the romance that I will be reading for the romance prompt. And yeah, this is shaping up to be like fairly easy TBR so far, which is making me think that like I should have had extras on there, but you know what, it's fine. I'm going easy on myself, it's fine. Okay, it's time to pick our last regular prompt and then we have to pick mash and maybe an extra if one comes up, but so far so good. So let's see what our last regular prompt is. Why is it? I just counted that completely wrong. I've just realised I just counted to nine. It would have been the same thing anyway, because it would have been nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But I didn't want to have to refilm that and then clearly see where I put it back. So I thought I'd just explain. I did take the right one off, but I just counted wrong. Not that anyone was really sat there like watching exactly how many I counted, but I don't know. Some of you might be. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, we have our last regular prompt if I can get it off of the wall and also get the other washi tape down, there we go. And we don't have to pick any extras. And the prompt is a hardback, which everything else that I have like prepared to pick is a hardback. So this is going well for me. Bear with me one second, I will figure out which one I actually want to put on my official TBR for this month. Okay, so for this one, I am going to go with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. So, it is a hard bike. I have the Waterstones exclusive edition with the blue sprayed edges and I bought this when it first came out and have just not read it but I have been so intrigued by this. Um, I'm going to read you the synopsis of this one because I feel like a lot of people think this is something different than what it is. I keep seeing people say 
well, like, because they look at the cover and they see it's all shiny and silver and they say, oh, that's a sci-fi and I'm pretty sure it's contemporary as far as I know. Um, but I'm going to read the synopsis to you. So it says, this is not a romance, but it is about love. Two kids meet in a hospital gaming room in 1987. One is visiting her sister, the other is covering from a car crash. The days and months are long there. Their love of video games becomes a shared world of joy, escape and fierce competition. But all too soon that time is over, fades from view. When the pair spot each other over eight years later in a crowded train station, they're catapulted back to that moment. The spark is media and together they get to work on what they love, making games to delight, challenge and immerse players, finding an intimacy in digital world that eludes them in their real lives. Their collaborations make them superstars. This is the story of the perfect world Zadie and Sam build, the imperfect world they live in, and of everything that comes after success. Money, fame, duplicity, tragedy. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow takes us on a dazzling imaginative, imaginative quest as it examines the nature of identity, creativity, disability, failure, the redemptive possibilities in play, and above all, I need to connect, to be loved, and to love. I am very much thinking I'm going to love this. Like, everything I've heard about it makes me think it's going to be a book that I love and I think that's why I've not been reading it because I think I'm scared of not liking it but I just now I feel like it's the time to actually finally pick it up so this is going to be on my TBR for September and this is I'm very excited about this TBR so far but anyway now let's see what MASH brings up because this is always where it starts to fail so we don't have to pick any extras I actually haven't put anything that was like on my friends picks on here i mean i could based on what comes up on mash maybe that's what i'll do we will see but for now let's just see what mash leaves us with and of course it makes it be mansion which is a big book and i did check before i picked the hardback i sort of checked out the page numbers of everything that i still had left and was like okay well I have got one that's under 300 pages so that could count as a small book I don't have anything that is over 500 pages on that list and that is usually what I pick as a big book and I feel like I kind of want to cheat but also I don't but I don't know what else I would put on this because no there's something staring at me and I'm like no I'm not putting that on there what what would I read that's over 500 pages that, like I'm in the mood for at the minute that is the problem bear with me one second you know what I think I am gonna cheat slightly but also with a caveat that I'm actually kind of putting two books on my TBR rather than one so one of the books that I wanted to read this month and yes before she comments yes Meg this is another recommendation from you and um, this is actually one of the ones that could have I don't know if it was in this stack of ones here because I picked them at random but it was one of the friend picks for this year and I've been wanting to read it and also I just got the sequel because I didn't buy the sequel when it first came out from Illumicrate, it's a subscription box book and I regretted not getting it because it sold out a lot because it sold out a lot quicker than I expected it to and then they had some extras on like a recent extra sale thing that they did so I bought it so now I own both and it is a duology so maybe I just read both of them and then that combined will be a mansion book i mean this is like 460 something pages anyway so it's very very close but it is a river enchanted by rebecca ross i again know nothing of the synopsis of this and i don't really want to know too much um i don't know i really really, really don't know um but look how pretty the book is it's just a very beautiful copy i do like i said also own a fire endless i could just grab meg's copy of the second one to show you my copy is upstairs but i've been wanting to read it and i think now that i have the duology as well to sort of justify the fact that i've just spent the money on the second one i feel like i should read them both see how i like them and if i don't like them then obviously i can get rid of the set as a whole but hopefully i love them and i will really, really really want to read divine rivals as well because i keep seeing everyone going crazy about that although i will then be annoyed that i didn't get the fairy loot edition because i'm not subscribed to fairy loot anymore and i can see the fairy loot edition over there as well and it's so pretty but yeah this plus a fire endless if i like this obviously if i don't like this i won't be reading a fire endless but if i do then it will definitely count as a mansion because i'll be reading like 800 pages so yeah that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? And let me just go and grab the other books, actually, so we can see how my TBR is shaping up. And I will actually grab my next copy of A Fire Endless so I can show it on there and show how much I have to read this month. So yeah, for someone who didn't want to have too big of a TBR because she wants to mood read, this is not looking small. It's not looking that big, but like, there's a lot. There are two romances, 
one like contemporary but not romance at the bottom and then three fancy so it's a nice balance of things but this is what it's looking like i am going to show you the few other things that i did want to get my tbr because there's two others that i wanted to get on there plus deviate um and i'm hoping that i will still read these this month so i'm just going to show them as sort of like maybe i'll read them because this is kind of how i've been doing my tbr since i've been filming down here and so i don't have to keep running up and downstairs to grab boxes i sort of grab a selection of books that i am interested in reading this month and then i still play the game and i just fit the prompts to them as and when I can and then obviously if I have to pick something completely different like when I got to middle game then I will but the other two that I really wanted to read this month are Alone With You in the Ether by Oliver Blake. Oliver Blake keeps having new books coming out that I haven't read and I really enjoyed the first Atlas 6 book. Didn't love the Atlas Paradox but I'm really intrigued to see what the writing is like in a book that isn't from that series so I would like to read this especially because Masters of Death has just come out and that one sounds really intriguing. There is also I can't remember what the other one's called. Is it one for my enemy or something like that? That one has come out. Oh, it tells you in here, actually. Yeah, one for my enemy. That one has also come out. But Master of Death is the newest release, and that's the one I'm most intrigued by. But I've owned this one for a while, so I thought I should probably read this first. This was a book that would have been if I got Apartment as Pick, because it's quite small. And then the other one that I want to read is another recent special edition from a book box company it wasn't in the monthly box it was just a separate one i bought and that is mortal follies by alexis hall i have read four alexis hall books i've read both of the books in the bake off it's the winner bakes it all series uh roseline palmer takes cake and paris Island court is going to crumble or about to crumble um, and i've read boyfriend material and husband material and i enjoyed them all i am intrigued to see what they do with a fantasy world and also this this cover is just stunning like it's so pretty so i needed to get it because look at the spray edges and i would like this to not be one that sort of just sits on my shelf for ages until i read it i would like to read it sooner rather than later so i would hopefully read this in september um, and like i said i would also like to read deviate potentially i will read true life as well this month um but that probably will end up being the beginning of october instead but that is kind of how my reading is shaping up it's not the easiest reading month necessarily but it's also not the worst and i'm hoping having some structure to it will be good because whilst i have enjoyed being able to mood read this month there have been times where i've just had no idea what to reach for next so it'll be nice having a bit more structure back to it but that is everything i am going to be back with more videos i have a whole plan laid out i was going to film one tonight but We'll, we'll see how that goes but i should have another one up in the next few days which will be part one of sort of catch up of the last two months i'm going to do a book catch up a theater catch up and then we'll do my regular wrap ups for august because i don't think i ever did a wrap up for june so i need to do sort of june and july separate and then i'll do august and then we'll be back on track i have some tag videos to film i have some general sort of like recommendation videos and things to film i have got some things that i'm not going to try and explain now because i've got ideas that just aren't quite cemented yet but i have got ideas so videos will be coming i do have like a nicer setup to film in now now that we've decorated down here so things are all falling into place but anyway i'm gonna stop rambling thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe all that good stuff down below let me know what is on your tbr for september and i will see you guys soon with a new video i promise bye <laughs>